Today, our guest for the first time is a lady, Melissa Winter. She will tell us about her life in New York City, how the pandemic changed her life and her hope for the future. If it's the first time you're here, remember to subscribe to my channel and activate the bell so every time a new video is released, you will be the first one to know. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome back to another episode of The Real Voices of New York City. And this time, for a change, we have a lady. And let me tell you, what a lady. Please welcome Melissa Winter. When you're ah. clapping, by the way. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So how are you, Melissa, these days? I am getting through. I'm I'm doing good. And it's always, you know, ins and outs yeah. in this time. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, I've met Melissa almost three years ago. We had just moved to East Harlem, and Melissa and her husband moved to the same building we used to live. We lived on the first floor. Melissa lived on the basement, which had direct access to the backyard. We both had a dog. I actually had two dogs by the time, so we became friends as time, as time went on and on and on and on. And, we haven't lost a sight of each other, despite we both live in two different places. Now we are absolutely overlooking two very important parts of the city. I'm on the Upper West Side, Melissa is on the Upper East Side. So we are separated by Central Park. How cool is that? Which is not a bad way to be separated, to have to go through Central Park to meet up. It's, things could be worse. Oh yes, could be raining. You know? <laughs> as somebody said in a very, very old movie. Melissa, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you're doing, then after that, where you're from, why you came to New York, how it's going so far. So in other words, the microphone is yours. Great. Uh, well, I, as Nicholas said, we moved to East Harlem about three years ago. Um, my husband and I moved from Southern California, where we grew up. We were thriving living life there and uh, I've always wanted to pursue acting as a career and one day we were finally kind of at the end of contracts and commitments and we were the lease was up on our apartment and we went well why not now and so we moved uh, we came out for a visit and ended up applying for an apartment got it and then six weeks later we were out here um, so we've been here about three years now, have lived in two places, no longer in East Harlem, we're on the Upper East Side now. And it is, especially right now in quarantine, it's a journey because I was primarily a live performer, theater, cabarets, music, concerts, etc., And that is all but gone <laughs> right now, as you may imagine. Uh, so, we're we're getting through finding other routes um before quarantine think oh my gosh before quarantine things were oh my gosh sorry i'm getting a phone call of course everyone calls me like when i'm doing things okay sorry about that no worries um, <laughs> um at the start of quarantine, right before we all shut down, I was in an off-Broadway show. Uh, I was still in a kind of post-production of a new musical that I'm a part of that's being recorded. Um, and we, we've we been recording music for the last couple months and shooting music videos and that sort of thing. And that was all getting released, which it still is, mm -hmm. just in a slightly different time we were supposed to have a big launch party in june which didn't happen um but as of a couple days ago we're on apple music now so that's really fun uh and spotify for this new musical so i was having a pretty successful time you know i was having successful auditions i was making good connections i was 
getting to be a part of some really fun projects and then coronavirus hit and New York shut down and got the worst of it and learning to pivot. How would you define the current situation? Because, you know, most of the people are saying a lot of things about the city and of course they don't live here. And uh, what's your opinion about New York City? First of all, the, the thing I'm always going for, everybody says New York City is dead. What's your opinion? On how empty New York City is? No, in general, they, they say New York City is dead because it won't, it won't start again. There's no economy, there, there's no people living. If you say it's dead, I will end up the interview so you can decide whether to carry on or not. <laughs> the, uh, yes, New York looks different. It does, undoubtedly. Absolutely. But New York, is famously filled with resilient people who came here. A lot of people come here on the wings of a dream. And those are the best people to be with in a time of crisis. You know, if New York can bounce back from hurricanes, from 9-11, we can come back from this, you know? It's gonna look different, absolutely. And there will be people that don't come back. I know a lot of my actor friends have moved out of the city. Um, some are planning to come back, some aren't. Yeah, New York is gonna look different. But New York looked different 10 years ago. Exactly, exactly. And uh, this is a, a particular business sector, the, the, one, the one you're in, especially now with the shutting down of Broadway, Broadway, you said correctly, a lot of people moved out. Mm -hmm. Not all of them know whether they're going to come back or not. And this delay in reopening, we're talking about the end of May, but probably some people who are more informed think that it's probably just a way too optimistic date or something. Sure. Do you think that the biggest problem for the reopening will be getting people to see the show or actually find all the necessary people for a cast to, to carry on and for a show to actually be performing? I don't think finding cast members and crew members is going to be an issue. Okay. No, I, I think shows will be recast. People who were performing are no longer going to be on that performance. Because at this point, contracts have lapsed and people can re-sign contracts, not re-sign contracts. I don't know how well Equity has worked in, well, what about natural disasters in their contracts? I don't know how well that's covered and I don't exactly know what that looks like. But at this point, most people's contracts will lapse while we're in quarantine mm -hmm. and they're not going to, they may not resign. Um, but someone will. People are still dying to perform. So I think the thing that's going to be difficult, it's not going to be finding performers and finding creatives to put on the show. It's going to be getting tourists back to the city to see the shows, especially those long running shows, your Lion King, Phantom of the Opera, those shows that have been around for years thrive on tourists who come to the city and want to see this iconic show they've heard about. For everyone that lives here, you've probably seen that show already. You're not gonna be flocking to those theaters and putting yourself at risk. Sans being huge fans of certain shows, you know? But the general person that lives here isn't gonna be flocking to shows they've already seen. They're gonna be flocking to new shows. So those new shows, I think, are going to do better than the older shows because older shows rely on tourists. New shows are for the people that live here. Yeah, that, that's a very interesting perspective because every time we think 
uh, of Broadway as people who probably don't go there every single time is actually thinking more of these old running shows mm -hmm. than the new ones. And this is a very interesting perspective. Yes, the new ones will attract locals while the old ones mostly rely on people coming, coming from yeah, outside of the city. So do you think that it's been uh, a very act of courage to remain in New York during this quarantine period. Do, do you think it's part of your commitment to pursue your dreams and your vision? Do you think it was the lesser of two evils or what? I am lucky enough that my spouse has a job that wasn't really affected by the quarantine. Um, their numbers were a little different, obviously, but he always worked from home anyway. So his actual job remained pretty okay. So the fear of we can't pay rent wasn't as big of an issue for us because we did have one really strong streamline of income and we are very blessed to have that. Um, I know so many people that, that leases ended June, July, August, in summer, as they do in New York. Yeah. And with no guarantee of performances or working their restaurant jobs, with no guarantees of that, they didn't have a choice. They had to leave the city. And that sucks. It sucks. There's, you know, I lived here 10 years. I lived in this apartment 10 years and I had to give it up. I left my home to go back to where I grew up, which is... It's not a choice. You, you no. grew up because your parents live there. I, I totally understand your point. Do you also think that this moving somehow could also mean a good chance for other people to come here and go and try to hit the jackpot? I think eventually, and I think the timing of when we find a vaccine, things are reopening, I think that's going to have a huge factor on it because every year you get all these kids that graduated in their musical theater program in May and that summer and that first audition season, that first six months, those kids have moved to the city. They're young, like gung-ho they're able to get up at 4 a.m. every morning, which I just can't do anymore. <laughs> I'll do it, just not every day. All those kids probably aren't going to end up out here for until a little bit of time later. They're not going to all come flocking like they typically do in that like May, June, July yeah. time. So as we start to reopen because it's not going to be it's not going to be the flip of a switch that we're all suddenly okay even if we do get a vaccine it's going to take a while to roll that out to the general public that's going to take a while it's not going to be an overnight thing no it's going to take a while mostly for people to get accustomed to the fact that it's probably safe that's what i call the auschwitz effect just like when the prisoners in that concentration camp realized that the Germans had gone, they stepped outside, they saw a tank, which was a Russian one, but they were so terrified, then rather than running in the wilderness, they turned their back and they went back inside the concentration camp, which is something that, you know, it makes no sense rationally, but it's that fear. Okay, we are fine, but I will stay home anyway. Sure, you don't trust it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's it. I've heard that from Stony of like, oh, I'll let, that happened when restaurants started to open. I'll let them work out the kinks first. I'll let someone else go to, I'll stay inside for a little longer and yeah. let, let that happen. And then I'll trail behind. So yeah, that makes sense. It's not going to be, oh, suddenly we're back up and running. Oh, yes, indeed. And so, what, what do you think about what they say about crime in your area has crime really increased or you really didn't see that much of a change 
If you'd have asked me a week ago, I would have said, no, I haven't seen an increase. Um, but you're asking me today. And oh, yeah. yes, I have seen an increase. Uh, we had... <laughs> Mom, don't watch this video. We had someone in our building stealing packages and our super caught them and the person pulled a knife on our super. Oh. Our super's fine. Yeah. This happened this week. So, and I think that comes with people have a lot more free time on their hands and people are out of work. Oh yeah. It, it, it's mostly related to joblessness. You, you know, when I was talking to, to Jimmy last week, he made out a very interesting point. He said, more people are unemployed so you may guess that you know the crime rate uh, skyrocketed according to the joblessness rate he said despite everything i see that unemployment has increased but not as much as crime has so in the very end apart from a very few exceptions i would still say that there are still a lot of good people in new york are oh, you still yeah. okay because also on on top of that one instance that happened this week mm -hmm. once um i still hear at seven o'clock every once in a while you still hear the round of applause for all our frontline workers mm -hmm. we're right next to uh, um carl Schurz and gracie mansion mm -hmm. and every single day there's a vigil for black lives matter for george floyd for all the lives that we've lost at the hands of racial aggression and the racism in this country and you see more and more people there every single day. That's not really dwindling. We still hear them marching every single day. And never, to find less, and never to less, crime has not increased despite uh, so many of these people. No, they're marching peacefully. They're very kind. It's the whole, the whole like people are looting. That's a different group of people than the people that which actually happened, but, but it was just for a few days and at the very beginning of all of this. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and the people that are marching peacefully for Black Lives Matter, uh, they wouldn't align themselves with them. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's our group of people. That's not our group of people. That's not what we want. We're not doing this so that we can break into a hair salon and steal hair dryers. Exactly. So, two questions. Yeah. What do you mostly miss of the good old days and what would you like to see once everything gets back to normal? Normal. Um, what I miss about the good old days, the good of those days, um, is as dumb as it sounds, I miss the really exhausting audition days. Mm -hmm. Because you, you meet people that are on a similar path to you. And I've said this before, as, as there are so many people doing what I'm doing. They've come to New York to be a theater actor. Um, it's still a very lonely journey. Even with other dreamers, mm -hmm. it's still a really lonely journey. And there's a sense of camaraderie with the other people that are keeping their nose to the grindstone and you know mm -hmm. um because from there you have really good conversations and oh let's take this dance class together and you won't believe this project i worked on let me tell you about it and that sort of a thing um and i i miss performing live in front of people and that anxiety which i always hated mm -hmm. but i'm missing now <laughs> Okay, which is something that kept you more and more alive. Yeah, it kept me alive. It got me in classes and working harder and trying to be a better performer and a better creative, you know? Every time I came out of an audition, I kept a journal of my auditions that I go on. And I say, these are the things I really liked about it. These are the things I can improve on. And that's all I can do coming out of an audition. Um, the thing I am hoping for when we return 
to open doors and less coronavirus scare is a little more kindness. Not that... Please explain. This is interesting. Not that, not that it is an unkind um, job to be in and career to be in. But it's very quick. I think people, and myself included, I am definitely a, a... I definitely do this. You have a habit of forgetting that other people are humans mm -hmm. and can say thing at times can selfishly do something that hurts you hurts your friends I think it's really easy to get caught up in your own success that you forget that other people are living their own life and carrying their own burdens around you mm -hmm. and I think so meaning this more kindness somehow means look beyond the tip of your nose. <laughs> so yeah, thick. just thinking a little more beyond your own self. And okay. I'm, I do it. Well, I, I think everybody I, does. Too, everyone does it, yeah. Um, well, I wouldn't punish yourself so much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, this is interesting because it leads spontaneously to another question. Mm -hmm. Do you have the impression New Yorkers are unkind or rude, as many people say? No, they're honest. Hmm. I used to live in Orange County in California, close to LA. And <laughs> the way I describe it is that the people in LA and Orange County are just thinking the things that New Yorkers are willing to say. Okay. <laughs> they're thinking it. They just don't necessarily say it. Whereas New Yorkers will tell you. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess the gap between thinking and saying it is very, very, very much a very small fraction of a thousandth yeah. of a second. You yeah, know? it's and then also the thing of people in New York is they're probably not thinking about you afterwards. If someone yells at you because you're standing in the middle of a sidewalk holding your phone, not thinking about anyone around you and they yell at you to move. Once you move, they're probably not thinking about you anymore. Oh yeah, that that's that's for sure. That, they're, that lady... they're not thinking about the next thing, so don't dwell on it too much. If someone yells at you, that, there is a lady. You yelled at someone. Oh, sorry, carry on. You yelled at someone in Orange County, I think. Oh, yeah, I, I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> they stay and they stay in your mind. So th this lady I know says New Yorkers are reflective. They reflect the way they feel you think about them. If you're nice to them, they're mm. going to be nice to you. If sure. you think they're stupid, they're going to be extremely not so nice to you. Interesting. Sure. I see that. Yeah. Try to get, immediately get a read on you. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> this morning as I was leading a group of people at the Statue of Liberty, something of this New York thing came straight out of my mouth. There were people taking pictures by the statue and i had been there for four or five minutes at a certain point i said come on filming gone with the wind took less time let us go <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's very new. someone thought it yeah. just a new yorker will say it yeah and i had absolutely <laughs> forgotten the very moment i said that you're absolutely you're absolutely right so what would you say to people who would love to come to New York to pursue their dreams? Would you still recommend it? As I, would, I would recommend it. Maybe not now. Don't come flocking now. Hmm. But I would recommend it. Because even if you're... Even if 10 years from now, everything I've done is all I did, and... You know, coronavirus gets the best of me. I end up leaving the city or I end up just stop pursuing. I still tried it. Oh, yeah. I would I would regret not trying it, which is ultimately what led me here. I was working the nine to five job and I convinced myself that theater and performing was a hobby. 
how long could you keep it that way? Not <laughs> how not long, long were you able to fool yourself? Yeah, I did it. I would have ended up hating myself and resenting my family and you know, you gotta try. And yeah. your dream may change when you get here. And that's also okay. If I may say something to make it even better, you know, I don't like the word try. How, how many times did you hear me saying, don't say try because it automatically implies the change of feeling. And say, ra rather than trying to say, go for it and see what happens, does it sound better? Yeah, you have to do it. Yes. You gotta do it. Yeah. That's your call. Yeah. So do it. And uh, what are you working on right now? What am I working on? Well, uh, I was working on the HBO show, The Flight Attendant on the COVID team. Uh, I'm gonna be working on another show for Apple TV, which I haven't signed that contract yet, so I can't actually say what it is yet. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that for the next eight months. And then I'm also producing a commercial for a startup. Ooh. Yeah. So you see, there's a lot of things going on even during the pandemic. Yeah. Somehow this is still the place to be. Yeah, things fall in your lap and the connections you make and it's, it's interesting seeing doors open up that you didn't expect. I didn't expect myself to be a producer this year. What food do you miss the most now that there are all these restrictions? What food do I miss the most? Okay, because I live in New York, this has nothing to do with COVID. No. But because I live in New York and I used to live on the West Coast, I still miss In-N-Out. Okay, that's interesting. That's the first thought I had until I realized you were asking about COVID. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. It... But I miss In-N-Out and that... I'm happy that ramen is it's finally ramen season yeah 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 that is absolutely true mm -hmm. and do, do you imagine one of our favorite restaurants mali mm -hmm. now that it's open 25 percent of capacity yeah. want, you know, it's a fantastic thai restaurant my friend so fantastic good. one i don't know about melissa and trevor but when rosa and i moved to east Harlem, we stopped thinking about it at the restaurant, it was so good that it played a crucial role on us renting that that place. Did it really? That's so funny. Yes, we, we said we there. love it so much. We can't afford to be that far away from there. Yeah, and it's good food. Good and not at all expensive, which is, which is another great thing. And uh, uh, what was I saying about Mali? Okay, it, it, it's got it's got a very interesting layout because you know at Full speed, it has 17 seats. Now that it's 25% of indoor dining, it's only table for four. So just two couples and be sure to, to be quick. And once again, I would recommend Mali all my life. M-A-L-I, Mali. M-A-L-I-I, -I. I think it was two. Is it I-I? Uh, I guess so. But anyway, it's on yeah. Second Avenue before 104th and 105th Street. Yes. Yeah. So try it next time you come. And rest assured, it's a good, it will still be there. Yeah. Yes. So, Melissa, thanks so much for being with us. Is there anything else you want to share with our friends? Um, New York isn't a ghost town. Support your artists. Yep. Fabulous. Support Melissa, support the other artists, and again, Thanks so much for being with us. Melissa Winter, New York in Yellow Shoes, and keep up the good work, everybody. Bye-bye.